Hey guys, James Sane here. So let's talk about when you have to give medications, which syringe to use, how do you drop the medications? Okay, and typically you do have a subtype of machine that dispenses your medications. Here in this lab, we have a Pixis machine where it is a touch screen, you just log in. And then it's fingerprint, you have your password and your fingerprint. And then you have access, and I'm not gonna bring up anything because it has patient information. Um, where you access medications uh, to administer to the, uh, to the patients. So I do have some medication here from earlier today. Um, these medications come, and you should wear gloves, by the way, when you're handling medications, and you should have a mask on in the cath lab, but I'm having masks off for talking purposes. So the medications, they come with a, a cap on them. So the medications come with a cap on them. So the cap's already been popped off because we've already used this medication. So let's just look at this here real quick. So let's just pretend this is Versed, which it's not. We're gonna say Versed comes in two milligrams and two cc's. So you pop the cap off. You have these plastic caps that go on. And then you would use an alcohol wipe, wipe off the medication. And then on your syringe, you have a choice of syringes to use. So it, the medication only comes in two cc. So what I don't want to use, what I don't want to use is a 10 cc syringe. And I have the plunger pulled back as this was two cc's. Now if so I was giving all two cc's, that would be okay. But oftentimes when you draw a medication, you're going to give part of, of the CC. Now if I gave one CC, that would be relatively easy. But sometimes you're giving a half or a quarter of a CC. And that's difficult to do with the 10 CC syringe. Now, if we had a five CC syringe, this makes life a little easier. Let me pull the syringe back to and if you're saying, well, where does the plunger supposed to go? So I'll point out on the screen exactly where the plunger goes. So it's lined up on the two. And I can show you if it was going to be three cc's where the plunger should be. So it's the top part of this plunger. So this would be relatively easy to give one cc of medication. And I'm looking at the screen monitor so I need to pull it around. So that would be one cc in. But if I give half a cc, that's a little more challenging. And if I gave a quarter of a cc, that's even more challenging. Now there's nothing in here. There's just air in here. By the way, air and fluid looks the same. So what I want to use is a three cc syringe. So it's much easier to have draw up. Let me look back at it myself to make sure I'm at the 2cc mark. So there, I've got the plunger at the 2cc. So if I had to give a half a cc, well, it's very easy to get the plunger to a half a cc. Okay, and if I'm gonna give a quarter of a cc, it's much easier to give a quarter of a cc with a 3cc syringe. Now when you use this, when you drop the medications, you want to keep the barrel of the syringe sterile. I'm trying to get this in focus here. Yeah, you want to keep that sterile because it's going to come in contact with the IV fluid that's going to come in contact with the patient. You want to keep this barrel of the needle sterile because it's going to come in contact with the fluid that's going to come in contact with the, with the patient's bloodstream. This is a lure lock. A lure lock meaning it screws onto there. You take the needle cap off. This is a blunt needle. And then you would wipe off, wipe off. And this is a glass vial. Oh, there's something in here. So this is actually verapamil, but we're going to pretend. 
So to get the air out, you inject some air. The vial is not going to explode. And then you want to bring, you want to bring the tip of the needle down to the bottom. Because if I'm, if I'm all the way at the top, if the needle is all the way at the top, well, the fluid's all the way down at the bottom. So I have to get the needle to the bottom of the vial so I can start drawing the medication out. And pull the needle all the way towards the back so I can drop the fluid. So this is five mill verapamil, five milligrams and two cc's. And I have to put my glasses on. Not that you should recap needles, but one way if you had to, you can do the scoop method. This is a blunt needle, it's not a sharp needle. It's still, it's still sharp enough. So what do I have in here? I have one cc left. So in reality, this is five milligrams and two cc, so I have 2.5 milligrams of verapamil. But we were pretending this was Versed. So if this was Versed, if you walked in and found this vial, and it should be labeled, and so you label all your medications, the Versed has a label that comes off the vial, and you're supposed to date it and time it. So you put the, you put the label, whether it's Versed or fentanyl, or you, whether you have a blank label, and you have to label it yourself. So if you walked in and said, oh, this is Versed, two milligrams and two cc's, I have one cc left. Oh, I've got one milligram of Versed. So if the doctor said, go give a milligram of Versed, then I'd go push the whole thing in. If he said, give half a milligram of Versed, I would push half a cc in. Okay, now, the three cc syringe is the tool for the job when you're giving medication that typically comes, comes in two cc or one cc vial. Now, if you had medication like this is heparin, 10,000 units and 10 cc's, it's, a, it's 10 cc's in this vial. Well, you, you certainly don't want to use a 3 cc. You, you, you'd have to, you can't draw it all up. Here's an instance where you would want to use a 10 cc syringe, keeping that tip sterile, keeping that tip sterile, which I just touched it, it's not, but this is make-believe. That goes on there. Don't poke yourself. I'm gonna clean up, this usually has a, a plastic cap on it. You pop the plastic cap off, clean the top, get a little bit of air in the syringe, poke a hole, squeeze a little bit of air in, get the syringe vial down to the bottom, and then you can draw out the medication, which is, this is empty because this got used in the last case. So then you would just draw up the heparin. And it would be 10 cc's, boop, and then you'd have all the heparin drawn up you know, have heparin 10,000 units and 10 cc's or 1,000 units per cc. Now, when you administer this medication, we'll just set this aside. This, once I draw it up, I should label this. So I would write heparin 1,000 units per cc on a blank medication, on a blank time date, and then I would put it on the syringe to label it what it is. But oftentimes in the cath lab, you draw it up and you give it. So if you're gonna draw it up and immediately give it, you don't have to label it. All right, so now how do you give this medication through an IV? Well, that's a great question. So you need, you're gonna give it through an IV. Now, can you walk directly up to a capped off IV and, IV and give it? Yes, but you typically have your patient on, I think every cath lab out there has the patients on saline, so. This comes packaged, this is a 250 cc bag of saline. They almost typically always have, and so this is 0.9% sodium chloride, that's what normal saline is. They have one port down here for adding medications to it. They have another port here where you pull this blue thing off to connect IV tubing. Oh, so IV tubing, let's take a look at that. It just depends what IV system your cath lab, your hospital has in place. But you're going to use some type of pump. Some people might have a dial of flow where you just dial in and want this to infuse at 25 or 50 or 100 cc's an hour. 
but this particular ivy tubing I'm not going to put it on a pump so this would be if you cared about this particular pump how it was set up so most ivy tubing it has a spike that you have to keep sterile you need to keep that you need to keep that sterile I just took the sterile now now I can touch this all I want but when this is going to get poked into a bag because it's going to come in contact with the fluid if it's contaminated I just contaminated all the fluid now as you go down the tubing they all typically have some type of opening that accepts a lure a lure lock where you put the syringe on and inject the fluid there's another as we work our way down the tubing well there's another spot where we could give medication we work our way down the tubing I know it's all wound up here but this is the one that's going to be closest closest to the actual end of the tube so that's actually going to connect to the patient so the way this works is you take your bag of IV fluid you pop the connector off the end I want to keep that sterile that is sterile this is sterile I want to keep these two sterile and that plugs in there maybe you can twist it a little bit while you're putting it in and then typically this just hangs on the IV pole now we've got to get the air out of the line which I already put a little bit of air in there let me grab a trash can don't want to make a mess so you want to get the air out of the line because air looks look just like the fluid. Now I can tell there's air because I can see variations in the tubing. But this tubing, you may not be able to appreciate. Let me get close. This distal end of the tubing, it has nothing but air in it. So this distal end of the tubing, that's what air looks like which just looks like clear fluid as well. So, hang up our bag of fluid. We have it clamped off. I want to keep, I'm gonna take this cap off the end of this. This cap off, I wanna keep that sterile. Okay, that part, I'm about to contaminate it. That part there connects to the patient's IV. That part there, which I now I'm contaminating, but you want to keep you want to keep that sterile. It's going to connect to the patient's IV. So let's get the air out. We have a roller clamp that will unclamp. Now it's flowing freely through the drip chamber. We'll watch it come out. See all the air bubbles, getting all the air bubbles out. I don't like this tubing, by the way. It's the, what this hospital uses. It gets bubbles in it very easily. So all the bubbles still coming through. So we're going to get all the bubbles out. Now we've got all the bubbles out. Just about. Okay. Now we're going to cut up, close the roller clamp. I want to keep this sterile, so I'm going to put the cap back on it. And just to show you. When I had the tubing up there before, now this is full of fluid. Before it was full of air. Looks pretty much the same. So now, this connects to an IV on a patient, wherever their IV goes in their arm. So I need to give medication. I've drawn up, let's just go back to our make believe Versed, and let's say we have a milligram of Versed left. Let me undo the tubing here. So you have all this tubing. I have a port here. I have a port here. I have a port here. And this is where it connects to the patient. So hopefully it makes sense that if I put two cc's of fluid in here, it's not gonna travel very far through all this tubing. I wanna inject as close to the patient as I can get. Now sometimes in the cath lab, this may be in a spot it's difficult to get to and you may be injecting further back but you have to flush the fluid in. So 
You want to clean it off with alcohol. Again, this end is connected to an IV going in a patient. It's a lure lock connection, screws on. And then when I push the medicine in, I don't want it to go backwards towards the IV bag. I'm gonna squeeze it off. Let me just open that up. I'm gonna pinch off the tubing behind where I have it connected. I have it connected here. I'm gonna pinch off here. This part connects to a patient and then I push my medication in. Okay guys, I hope this helps. Uh, if you liked the video, hit the thumbs up. It would help my channel. And if you found the information helpful or useful, consider subscribing to the channel. And if you do, remember to turn on notifications so that you don't miss when the next video comes out. All right guys, thanks so much. We'll see you in the next video.